what is happening guys how are y'all doing today today we are going to be taking a look at a kaggle competition that i've been wanting to have a crack at for quite a little while so this is actually a google x moonshot kaggle competition and it's actually the ai for code uh kaggle comp which i think has a prize pool of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars not too shabby so we're going to be giving this a crack and just starting to take a look at the competition i don't imagine we're going to get way too far into it but again the goal is to write five lines of code because this is part of doing some daily data stuff i just realized the mic is all the way over there we are going to be getting into it and seeing how we go but before we do let's have a quick take a look at the chat and see what's happening rahul how you doing sandil how you doing conrad Willis Ogala, how you doing? Watching from Kenya, Dan. What's happening, Dan? How you doing, my man? Neural Hacks, what's happening? How you doing, Muhammad? How you doing, hey, Rula? How you doing, Wesley? What is happening, guys? And HMI, how you doing? How you doing, Himanth? Yeah, so I figured we'd just give this a crack, see how far we go or how far we don't go. Um, but I've been really getting back into Kaggle lately, so... Um, over the weekend or like to the, the, the start of this week, I didn't actually get to stream too much because I was actually the best man at my best mate's wedding. So um, I was memorizing my speech and making sure that, that he had a great day and sort of just acting back up because that's what you kind of got to do as best man. It was, uh, it was interesting. Um, I might have also lost my phone, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> anyway... I figured let's uh, let's kick this bad boy off and uh, let's just see how things progress. What do you say? Also, just double check that yeah, no audio looks good. Alrighty, let's do it. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the AI for Code challenge, which I think is this one: understanding code in Python notebooks. Right, so this one has clearly got a fair bit of dosh being attracted to it. So $150,000 in prize money. Not too shabby. Now, I didn't read much into this. This is a little bit small at the moment. But I wanted to sort of go through it and get an idea of what is actually involved. Because it's a slightly nuanced type of machine learning uh, task. Because I, I didn't even actually read what, what it was to do with. But I figured it looked cool, so we may as well give it a crack. Um, all right, so the goal of this competition is to understand the relationship between code and comments. Code and comments. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Um, in Python notebooks, you are challenged to reconstruct the order. Reconstruct the order of markdown cells in a given notebook based on the order of code cells. Hold on, am I reading this right? Let me just get a notebook out so I can make some notes. Before I forget, um, so the goal is to, let me bring this back here. So the goal is to understand the relationship between code and comments in Python notebooks, reconstruct the order of markdown cells. Okay, fine. And then what else do we have to do? So based on the order of the code cells. All right, very important to note. Go back. All right, context. Research teams across Google and Alphabet are exploring new ways that machine learning can assist software developers and want to rally more members of the developer community to help explore this area too. Let's bring this a little closer. Python notebooks provide a unique learning opportunity because unlike a lot of standard source code, notebooks often follow narrative format. Yeah, which is why I love them. With comment cells implemented in Markdown, that explain a programmer's intentions for corresponding code cells and understanding of the relationships between code. Hold on. So let's just, uh, hold on. So reconstruct the order of markdown in, based on the order of code. Cell. All right. So I'm guessing the goal is to what? So given code, so X will be code, predict order of markdown. Is that what is that what the goal is here 
An understanding of the relationships between code and markdown could lead to fresh improvements across many aspects of AI assisted development, such as the construction of better data filtering and pre-processing pipelines, model training or automatic assessment of a notebook's readability. Got it? We have assembled a data set of approximately 160,000 public Python notebooks from Kaggle and have teamed up with X, the Moonshot Factory, Beasts, to design a competition that challenges participants to use this data set of published notebooks to build creative techniques aimed at better understanding the relationship between comment cells and code cells. Got it. All right, so this is the comment cell, this is code cell. This is nothing crazy. We know what this means. If you've ever worked with... Um, Jupyter Notebooks is reasonably straightforward. So uh, M and Y to, to do shortcuts for that. After the submission deadline, Kaggle and X will evaluate the performance of the submitted techniques on the new, on, sorry, on new previously unseen notebooks. We're excited to see how the insight learned from this competition affects the future of notebook authorship. Interesting. Okay. Now, what does our data actually look like? All right, so what's our evaluation methodology? Predictions are evaluated based on the Kendall Tower correlation between predicted cell orders and ground truth cell orders accumulated across the entire collection of test set notebooks. Fine. Let S be the number of swaps. So what is that? A set uh, of adjacent entries. Number of swaps of adjacent entries needed to sort the predicted cell order into ground truth cell order. Okay. In the worst case, a predicted order for notebook with N cells will need... So one over two multiplied by n n minus one swaps to sort. Okay, we sum. So we're doing swap. We sw uh, uh, We sum the number of swaps from your predicted cell order across the entire collection of test set notebooks, and similarly with the worst case number of swaps. We then compute the Kendall Tower correlation as S i divided by what is S a uh, number of swaps? Okay, the S i divided by n, which is the Cardinality, predicted order with n cells. Okay, so the number of cells. Okay, fine. You may find a Python implementation in this notebook. Let's actually take a look at that because you can compute. Doo -doo -doo. Fine. Okay, I just want to take a look at this data. Oh, we've got nine days to, to enter this. Clearly, we're not going to hit this deadline given how hardcore. Anyway, it's good, good, to, good to take a look. All right, so what does our data look like? So this is our source. Cell type. Markdown, markdown, code, markdown, code, code, code. So you would need to break down. God, I don't even know how you'd approach this. This would be interesting. All right, let's get some data and at least start playing around. We're clearly going to need a couple of days to sort this one out, but we will give it a crack. All right, new notebook. I'm just reading some uh, questions here. So uh, how much maths do we need to learn for machine learning? Honestly, this book is like a massive lifesaver. So there's obviously a ton of math in, um, in Andrew Ng's machine learning course and deep learning course, but I think this is a really good primer. I'm like going through this and like I've got a bookmark. It's sort of where I'm up to at the moment. You probably can't say it's probably way too bright, but I'm, I'm definitely going through and, and learning and going step by step to at least get started. All right, so we are doing AI for code. All right, what are we doing? So uh, this is the Kaggle memory path. Uh, set up Kaggle. Uh, install Kaggle. All right, so we know that we need to organize the so this is our train what's the difference between our train set and our test set so we've got root and source
Yeah, so we know that this is string markdown, string markdown, string code. Am I missing something? Let's go, go. Uh, let's actually get set up. Um, all right, so we are going to need our Kaggle API key. Wait, I think I've got that on my desktop. I sure do, because I was messing around with it today. Make this a bit bigger so you can see it. Did I not upload that? All right, let's upload Kaggle. All right. Pip install Kaggle, and then we need to move this over. So let's just do all the commands in one. Um, so mkdr squeak uh, tilde forward slash dot Kaggle, and then we are going to copy Kaggle.json into that folder. So cp Kaggle.json into tilde forward slash dot Kaggle slash kaggle.json uh, and then chmod to give appropriate permissions tilde forward slash dot kaggle forward slash kaggle.json uh, and then we need to go and download the data so it'll be kaggle competitions download dash c and do, 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 it'll be ai for code so that there Run that. The neural hacks with the Vestance. I think long former will be good. So we probably have to predict the next cell being a markdown or code cell given the data of the past cells. Yeah something along those lines let's actually take a look oh and then we need to unzip our data set so unzip ai for code.zip let's write some appropriate comments get a uh, data set for the ai or code competition i want to start getting actually prepping like well ahead of time like actually taking a look at different different projects and at least getting us into a position where we can take a while to actually prepare like this one we're obviously coming to it too late nine days to to, to actually make a submission might not actually be enough i don't know if i'm going to be streaming tomorrow we shall see but um I am going to be streaming a ton more because I'm actually really enjoying it. All right, so let's do some exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis. So what do we have here? So let's take a look at our sample submission. So what is, is it exactly that it's expecting? The ID, so we actually want to predict the cell order, which are going to be unique values. So one, so given this particular ID, which I'm guessing is a Jupyter notebook, we need to predict the cell order. So regardless, so Wesley, I think we actually need to predict just the order. Not necessarily whether or not it's markdown or code. We uh, code that's obviously going to be important, but it looks like we just need to predict cell order. Can we not see what's inside a train? It's taken a little while. What's train ancestors? Oh, so we've actually got, hold on, let's go back to our data set. So there's more train ancestors. ID, ancestor ID, parent ID. Is there a data dictionary here? Okay, so hold on. The train orders.csv. And then, so this would presumably be the, what's it called? This would be the actual Jupyter notebook. This would be the cell orders. Okay, this is making a little bit more sense. Let's not zoom in that way.
this is part of the fun with data science, actually working out what your data means. All right, so ID, I'm guessing, is going to be the Jupyter Notebook. We have an explanation. Okay, we do. Let's actually read this. The data set for this competition comprises of about 160,000 Jupyter Notebooks published by the Kaggle community. Jupyter Notebooks are the tool of choice for many to blah, 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 yeah, whatever. The notebooks have been selected. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, all right. Show me this. Train. So a folder comprising 140,000 JSON files with the file names corresponding to the ID field in the CSV files. Okay, let's make a note. Let's write some notes. So... Inside of train, we're going to have inside of train, we're going to have a bunch of Jupyter notebooks with the title equal to the ID in CSV. Let's close this. Okay. Each file contains the code and markdown cells of the Kaggle notebook. The code cells are in their original correct order. The markdown cells have been shuffled. The code cells are in their original correct order. The markdown cells have been shuffled. Okay, fine. Important to note, I guess. Code cells in correct order. Markdown. Shuffled. We should go and take a look at some uh, some notes or some code for this. Um, see what other guys have done. All right, so train orders or CSV gives the correct order of the cells for each notebook. Oh, okay. All right, so we can reorder them correctly. Gives the correct order of the cells for each notebook in the train folder. ID the notebook. Cell order space delimited list of correct cell ordering. Oh, okay, fine. In id.json. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Makes more sense. Okay, so train orders. Got CSV. Do, do, do. Contains ID and correct order of cells inside of Jupyter Notebooks. Wonder what, what the purpose of shuffling the markdown is. Who knows? I wonder if you take like a um, if you take some sort of like embedding for this particular. Yeah, okay. All right, cell order space delimited list of correct cell order. Yep, cool. Train ancestors on Kaggle. A user make fork that is copy the notebook of another user to create their own version. Yeah, makes sense. This file contains the forking history of notebooks in the training set. Note, there is no corresponding file for the test set. Fine. Ancestor ID identifies sets of notebooks that have common original ancestor. Okay. As no notebook in the test set has an ancestor in the training set, you may find this field to be of use as a grouping factor when constructing validation splits. Got it? Kind of got it. Uh, indicates that some version of the notebook ID was forked from some version of the notebook. Paranoid error. Right. Mm, let's ignore a train ancestors for now. So to help you author submission code, we've included a few instances selected from the test set. When you submit your notebook for scoring, this example data will be fine. All right, how are people handling this? They're using BERT. Notebook copied from with edits. Interesting. He's got a bronze. Okay, ensembling rank bait. Fine. So read the notebook path. Okay, that makes sense. Using pandas to read it. Who authored this? Is this okay? Simple ensemble method for ranking problems. So it's a ranking problem. Interesting. I've never tackled one of this or one of these.
Please make a video. Yeah. Okay, let's actually load some stuff up. So... pd.read csv and if I go and read in train orders csv what are we looking at here mm -hmm. df.head okay so this is going to be space delimited based on our cell order so we've got one two three what's the max number of cells so if we go uh do, 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 it's not going to give us df notebook length equals df cell order Dot, uh, can we just go? I oh, would probably need a dot apply and then uh, lambda x x dot split and split on a space. And I want to return the length, the length of x. Yeah, so right now I'm just taking a look. Can we determine what is the length min and max length? of each notebook. Okay, let's see. df.head. Uh, so df notebook length dot ag mp dot min p dot max uh actually let's just go we can probably skip that notebook length all right show me them in no wait we don't want that dot uh, min so two so the our shortest notebook is going to have two code cells in it presumably a markdown and a Markdown and code cell. What's the max? All right, so we've clearly got one notebook that is absolutely massive. So DF, and let's go. Let's go and explore that one for now. So DF notebook length equals 1005 DF. So that's going to be our Jupyter notebook. And can we go uh, import os, os.path.join, and we're going to be going into train, and we want that specific JSON file. So our uh, long MB, I'm just messing around here, doing a bit of an EDA. Okay, so that is what our data looks like. Or well, that's the longest Jupyter notebook that we've got. But keep in mind, this is all shuffled as well, remember? So some markdown. So if we now go into, well, train orders is going to have that. We should have named this differently. So if we go into DF, Uh, yeah, so this is our appropriate cell order. So what we're saying here is OC72BA5 would be first. So if I went into here and said dot lock, whatever this is. Nope, no space. Get rid of that. What we're saying is this particular cell would go first. Then this cell... And so on and so forth. Interesting. Okay. I don't know. Let's uh let's answer some questions. Again, I just wanted to sort of get started with this and see how we might actually take a look. Because your boy's got one last meeting that he needs to go handle today. But let's uh let's quickly take a bit of a break. 
Alrighty, so please make a video on visual common sense reasoning or visual question answering. Sure, we'll take a look eventually. Neural hacks with Vasanth. So, but we can make an application from this for a code completer. Presum yeah, so I guess that's where they may be going with this. So you can type markdown in and then it will return some sort of code below it, probably. Do I think GPT-3 will be able to help on this? I don't know, because we need to reshuffle the order. So it's not necessarily a just a pure generation thing. It's like you'd actually have to take the cells, convert them to some sort of embedding, or convert actually take the code, convert it into some sort of embedding, and then pass out. It'd be generative, right? Or like a recurring type of thing, because you'd need to go and either sample which particular cell is going to come next. Wait, I'm doing this during work? No, I'm not. I'm actually, um, I've got another meeting now. This is outside of work. It's, it's something for YouTube, which we've got a couple of interesting projects coming up specifically around Edge AI. So um, I'm just having a chat with someone about that but to see where we could definitely go with this. Uh, Partha, so we are taking a look at the AI for code competition. I'm coming to it way too late because uh, there's only nine days left. But again, um, part of this is just to do a little bit of EDA and get started, see where we can go with it. Who knows? Maybe I'll, uh, I'll crank out a bunch of code this weekend and we'll actually see if we can make a submission. But so far, let's quickly go through what we've actually taken a look at and established so far. So really... We are just taking a look at this particular competition here. Let me jump back. I'm going to share it in the chat. And so the game plan is, or what I've done so far is just taken a look and started writing some notes on how this actually, or what the data set is and what the task is. So, so far we've established that we've got a bunch of Jupyter notebooks in our test folder and our train folder, so in these two folders. Now the thing is that the data that's stored in each one of those folders, or the, the actual notebook structure is being shuffled up. So what we're noticing now is that we need to, inside of train orders over here, which is this CSV, which we've already read in, we have the ID of the Jupyter notebook and the correct cell order. So presumably we are going to, if we actually take a look at our sample submission, this would be the goal. Given a specific Jupyter Notebook with shuffled orders, we would be going and unstructuring that. Well, actually, so given... Yeah, so are the IDs really all that important? Well, no. So given the specific ID for a Jupyter Notebook and presumably given the shuffled up cell order, go and unshuffle it. Because we'd be taking train. You'd have to have the Jupyter Notebook or some sort of notebook with shuffled order in yeah interesting anyway again goal wasn't to go too far in this we've at least started exploring it working out how stuff is maybe we'll go and take a look at what some of the sample submissions go and do but in this case you can see there's a lot of pre-processing what do we have we'd have to go and spend a bunch of time in this but yeah cool anyway i figured i'd uh I'd just give it a crack we'll start exploring seeing What's, what the deal is all about. So Wesley's question. So when do you think the best time is, is the, when do you think is the best time to start Kaggle competitions? I mean, as soon as you want to get involved, but it's also important, I think, to start as soon as the competition is released. Cause I'm at a huge disadvantage now because there's nine days to go, but, uh, I'm presuming, I'm guessing this has been out for quite some time. So maybe we'll go and find a competition that has just started. So we've at least got a chance. But uh, yeah, there's obviously a ton that's possible here. Are those cell orders memory locations? So this is coming from Partha. Are those cell orders memory locations of those cells or general metadata of the notebook? So those cell locations that we're taking a look here, uh, it's to do with it. It's actual a unique identifier for this specific notebook. Uh, so if we go and take a look inside of our data set here, so if we go and open up one, for example, so this is what it's actually referring to, right? So we've got all of our cell types and this is the ID that I'm guessing it's referring to here. 
So what's the other components, the cell type, and this is the actual source. So over here, so we've got this specific cell type. What we're trying to identify is this order. So it's gone and been shuffled inside of this particular Jupyter notebook. We've got the unshuffled order inside of our train orders.csv. We need to try to work out how the hell to go and unstructure that so that we're able to reorder it. So that's the game plan. So maybe we'll come back to this one tomorrow. Let me know in the comments if you want to keep going with this one or we go and take a look at another one, but at least that is five lines of code <laughs> written today. Probably not as productive as we wanted to, but this is my first day back post that wedding. So I am just getting my brain working again after all those cocktails in Queensland. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. It's been a little bit quick, but again, if you like more Kaggle competitions or find some more competitions that you want me to give a crack at or start exploring, do let me know. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. If you've got any questions, hit me up. I'll catch you in the next one. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday. We'll see. Peace.